This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Harris versus Boone. You all have been dating about three years. Why have you brought your boyfriend here today, Miss Harris? Um, well, Yon, I brought him here today because he's a rapper in D.C., and I wanted to find out, is he cheating on me or is he just using his music career as a way to just go out and talk to females? Well, Yon... Mr. Boone! My girlfriend of three years, she think I use my artistry as a way to flirt with different women, to sit back and everything I do, I'm with a woman. That's what she... That's what she claims. I'm here to prove that I'm not cheating, that I'm actually working on my craft, I'm doing my shows, everything I say I'm doing, I'm doing. Right. All right. So you claim you're not cheating on him? I'm not cheating. Look at her. Why would I cheat on her? She's beautiful. She, she a little crazy, but she's beautiful. He thinks buying me gifts supposed to make me happy after he do crazy stuff. So if he is found to be cheating, your three-year relationship yeah. is over. Yeah. It's over. All right. Mr. Boone, what kinds of things does she do to try to catch you cheating? Somehow, I don't know. Everywhere I'm at, she ends up there. <laughs> I don't know how she ends up there. Does she I like your music? I four hours away and she pops up. She like your music? Yeah, she, she listens to my music. She supports my music. Okay, so you want people to come to you when you're performing, right? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's not unusual, is it? it if you look at the way she does it, it's definitely unusual. Okay, tell <laughs> us how she does it. Uh, for example, I had a show one time, and she supposedly wasn't coming. I don't know how, about 20 minutes before the show ended, she was the first one in, all the way in the front of the audience, and there was about 150 people there. I don't know how she made her way through the whole crowd, but she was the one right there in the front, just looking at me like... So, what? what? That's all she doing, just looking at me. Why is that a bad thing? I mean, she's there to support her man. Okay, Mr. Look. Cutler, let's, let's be real. If I'm sitting here doing this, now you know what I'm thinking. I'm going, mm-hmm. But... Wait till you come off this bench. We gonna talk about that. <laughs> Look, a lot of... You know, women don't support their men when they're out doing their thing. So he should be happy that she's there. We're gonna prove it right here. Were you happy or were you spying? I was spying. All right, see? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What were you expecting to find? Oh, he didn't tell the other part. He got off the stage, went to another female, started singing to her. That's what they do. They you sing to women. For your woman and sing it to another female. You can't be the only one buying his music, so he can't Amen. just sing to you. Am I right? No. You, okay, you're gonna be... <laughs> you're gonna be the only I one... He was just singing to me. You write a song for me, you sing that song to me. You wanna rap to somebody else, you rap with music, you write for them. Don't All sing right. my song to me. When you met him, was he an artist? Yes. Well, so what did you love about him? Made me smile. We went on trips. He take care of me and my son. We, we live with him, we stay with him. He takes care of us, basically. He's there, he's my supporter. But you knew he was an artist. I knew that. And you, and you know that Wait, as an artist... I knew he, he was an artist, but I didn't know, like, how big it was. She thought I was a painter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait a minute. You know that if you, if you want him to have the best, he's got to sell records. He's not going to just sell to you or to me. He's going to sell to this room, to this building, to this city, to this state, to the nation. Okay. That's what we want to get to, right? Am I right? I don't know what that means. Talk to me. <laughs> that was the looks he was giving him on stage. He didn't know what it was either. <laughs> That's exactly what that was. Use your words. Use your words. So if you want him to get this big, you want him to get this big, right? He might leave me if he get that big. Is that what you're afraid of? Yep. Okay, okay. so you... I thought you were supporting his career. I'm supportive, but... You want him to stay here? Yeah. Yana. I go to the studio. She, she, she been to the studio with me, so she knows when I'm in the studio, my work ethic is heavy. It's strong. So, that day I went to the studio. As soon as I left the house, I mean, literally, I started the car. Why you leave me? I said, you said you didn't want to go. Well, how you know that's what I really wanted? What you mean? What? Well, he did the hour away. Where I'm supposed to go, he got the car. So, Miss Harris, he's working a full-time job. He's trying to get a career together as a rapper. He's spending time in the studio. Why do you think he's cheating on you? Okay, like, one night when we left the club, three females followed us home. Hey, he would have checked them after his show then they wouldn't have followed us all the way to your house. He picked up the phone for this girl. Yeah, why you do so much after the club? Da -da -da -da. I'm like, hang up on her. Why are you talking to her? So she had his phone number? Yes. Why does your fan have your phone number? Because before she was a fan, I went to school with this, this young lady. <laughs> okay, so she was a classmate, a exactly. schoolmate. Exactly. And then we was also close friends prior to me and Che Rima talking. Okay, Did so you... Did you ever you... date her? 
Okay. No, I never dated her. Another example, Yana. I had a lawyer, a music lawyer, contact information on me. I had met her while I was out. I'm in the house, changing my clothes. She goes in my pocket, find the, con the, the, the number, call it, cuss the lady out before asking anything. Did you do that? Yes. She a lawyer. It was, it was a blank piece her of paper. on a blank piece of paper and not in her phone or his phone. So I wanted to know who it was. So if it had been in his phone, you'd have felt fine with that? If he no. put his phone, like, as lawyer, no. he had a ghetto name, Shanique or something like that. No, it didn't. <laughs> she ain't sound like no lawyer. It ain't say lawyer. It ain't had parentheses, my lawyer, lawyer lady, lawyer. She crazy. Me. Okay, Miss Harris. Who, why would a lawyer put her name on the paper so you could lose it? Because she didn't have any more cards. Exactly. Well, then she don't even need to be. I ain't not met her in passing. Okay, Miss Harris. Wow. Uh, Miss Harris. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's okay. my reaction every day. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You, you, you gotta do. You gotta do a face. Okay. Gotta do the face with it. His grandmother had a funeral. The funeral started at nine o'clock. He woke up seven o'clock. He never wake up that early. So I'm sleeping, I wake up, and he not there. Mind you, we done went, bought me a dress. I done got my hair done, you know? So I called him, I'm like, where you at? He like, yeah, I went to um, my grandma's funeral, da 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 Yeah, I'm gonna call you back, just like that. And I'm like, well, normally when he say you gonna call me back, I know what he doing, he cheating. So long story short, wind up having this, I found out that he, he had his ex at the funeral leaving with her. Did you know your ex was going to be at the I funeral? I did not know she was going to be there. You, you know. did not know? I did not know. Ain't no okay, so why did you... People. You bought her a dress, right? Yes. Why didn't you let her wear a dress to the funeral? Your Honor, this how the day went. All right. The night before, I told her what time the funeral was. Mm-hmm. I told her what time I was getting up, what time I was getting ready, what time I was leaving the house. Seven o'clock hit, alarm went off. I woke Che Ream up. She, ah, uh, don't wake me up. I said, okay, cool. I got dressed. I woke her up again. I said, Cherima, it's 8 o'clock. I get up in 30 more minutes. I said, okay, you got five minutes to get up or I'm going to leave. Five minutes passed, I left. Hold that thought. Did he do all that? No. Uh, of course I did. How smooth do that sound? So I got up and I just left. <laughs> no, he said he got up. He tried to wake you up. Okay, so, Miss Harris, basically, you bought a dress so that you would go to the funeral with him. And then he left you, and you didn't even get to wear the dress that you bought. Right. And so that's the basis of your lawsuit against Mr. Boone. Right. Which is for the cost of the dress? Yes, the cost of my dress. And, and how I much was the dress? Out. Listen to it. It was $150. And you want to be reimbursed for that because you feel the reason he left you was because his ex was going to be at the funeral, and he didn't somebody want you there. Somebody was going to be there. I don't know. It's going to be the birds, the flies, somebody. Just listen. <laughs> She, she, she delusional. Okay. She really is. I'm not delusional. Right. What other reason do you have to believe that he's cheating on you? He put up pictures of females. Oh, this is my WCW, hashtag wifey. Or he'll be flirting It'd with the girls. It'd be famous people. She was not famous. It'd be famous people. She ain't look nowhere near famous. Okay, wait. Ms. What's a WCW? Just Women those... Crush Wednesday. Women Crush Wednesday. Uh, uh... <laughs> hashtag You know you my Women Crush Wednesday. <laughs> How do you know what Women Crush Wednesday is? Because I have a crush on you on Wednesdays. <laughs> you know, mm, I, I, got got you. Do I got you. Thursday, Friday, right. Saturday, Sunday, okay, Monday, stop and it. Tuesday. I mean, there's people watching this. Stop it. Okay, all right. <laughs> We're having some difficulty understanding what it's like being in a relationship with it, someone in the music entertainment industry? Well, you know, given the lifestyle of, a, you know, any type of artist in the entertainment industry, but especially male uh, rappers or R&B singers, um, you know, they typically have a lot of women vying for their attention, and it can be really difficult if the artist is in a relationship with someone. The reality is so many rappers talk about two things, money and women. Uh-huh. And it seems like that bleeds over into their real lives. Mm -hmm. It helps them to create content, unfortunately, for their music, you know? And the people that they're singing or rapping to are mostly women, and that's who's going to be buying their albums. So they have to be marketable. Sometimes they have to appear single for the, you know, to create that desire. 
Thank you so much for being here today and sharing with us. We really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Ron, we'll just escort our guest out. Oh. <laughs> All right. To help get to the bottom of this, the court has ordered a social media scan of Mr. Boone's social media pages. At this time, the court would like to call cybersecurity expert Mr. Gregory Evans. Ron, please escort Mr. Evans into the courtroom. Yes, young. Okay, sir. How are you, Mr. Evans? Yes. You're doing great, Your Honor. How are you? All right. Good. Now, Mr. Evans, you conducted a social media scan on Mr. Boone's social media accounts. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. What did you find? Well, the first thing I noticed is that I did the scan, and we went all the way back to 2013. And I found the defendant is always and has been a flirt, okay? And it might be because it's, he's in the entertainment industry, and that's just part of it. So did you find anything recent? Yes, I did, Your Honor. This young lady who posted her picture of herself, and the defendant wrote comments, as you can see here, all right, so it looks like it says Women Crush Wednesday, hashtag wifey, hashtag is a snack, hashtag is a meal, hashtag is a dessert. I'm a snack, I'm a dinner, I'm a full course meal, hello. Okay. What else did you find? <laughs> <sighs> Let me continue. Please do, this is Three days good. ago, she posted another picture and he made another comment. You are so beautiful to me, can't you see? But that's a song. <laughs> I it just hit me. <laughs> yeah, that's what he posted. I was a on fan, you Sharima failed to mention how she pulled out about 12 of my dreads out of my head while I was asleep. Out. So that's why you wrote some other woman to say, you are so beautiful to me, can't exactly. you see? <laughs> for, for, for the past two months, me and Sharima, we haven't even been seeing eye that. A family member told her I had someone over the house. The person that was over the house did my hair. So you did have a female, but she was doing your hair. Did my hair left. You weren't having relations no. with her. You didn't have sex with her. No. But Miss Harris found out about it and snatched you by the hair. Exactly. While I was asleep. I was trying to wake him up so he could understand that I was mad about what listen was going to on. Him. Just listen. He wouldn't wake up. I was not pulling it either. to pull it out at first until I was like, oh, you feel it. You being funny now. You're not trying to get up. Well, to further get to the bottom of this, the court ordered a polygraph examination of Mr. Boone, and we have those results. Yes. Yeah. Rod, would you please provide the results? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. All right, the first question. Mr. Boone, you were asked, during your three-year relationship with Ms. Harris, have you used your social media to ask women for sex? Your answer to the question was no. The lie detector determined that you were being truthful. It was a snack. <laughs> we have one more question. Mr. Boone, you were asked, during your three-year relationship with Ms. Harris, have you had sexual contact with your ex? You answered no. The lie detector determined that you were being truthful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look at her. She, this is the quietest she ever been. This is the quietest she ever been. Can I give her the look? <laughs> Now that you know he's not cheating, do you still want us to rule on the lawsuit or do you want to dismiss it? Look at me. Do you want us to dismiss it? Yes, you can dismiss it, yes. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> to dismiss it. We're gonna dismiss the lawsuit. It is so ordered. Now, you are with a man in the entertainment industry. People in certain professions are going to attract women and women are gonna be attracted to them. Mm. It happens with singers, it happens with movie stars, it happens with judges. Huh, I mean, wait, things like... What? <laughs> you know... I'm just saying. If you're gonna be with someone in the entertainment industry, you're gonna have to get used to that. Maybe somebody in the entertainment industry is not for you.
You all are married. You've known each other for eight years. But allegations of cheating have put this relationship on hold. Ms. King. Yes. You've initiated this case. You brought your wife here to court. Tell us why. Well, Your Honor, I brought my wife here today because I'm just hearing a whole bunch of rumors and I seen a number in her phone that shouldn't have been there. I'm completely tired. I'm completely tired of people coming to me. I mean, it went so far to where a person called my job. They called my... Well, I was at work and someone had texted me saying 911. Basically just telling me, you know, you need to get home because they seen someone coming in and out of my home. So you I'm are the only exhausted. woman that should be coming in and out my home besides my wife, Tamika. And if I remember correctly from the court papers, there's one woman in particular that you are most concerned about. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Miss King, your wife has brought you here. She is exhausted by what is going on between you all. What do you have to say to the court? I mean, Your Honor, I'm exhausted too. You know, I, I'm like constantly getting accused, you know, and I'm. I want it back to how we used to have it. Like, I'm not out there cheating. Um, it is a lot at stake because we even became married. We were actually friends for eight years. Okay. So, y'all got some history. Both of you all are in this thing just swimming. swimming. And everybody's tired and you trying to get out of it. I mean, I ain't swimming. I'm on the couch. Well, not literally <laughs> swimming, swimming, but... I'm drowning. You drowning. You drowning. Yeah. Oh. From master bedroom to a love seat, and I ain't getting no love. <laughs> so, you sleeping on a love seat right I'm now? I'm on a love Ironically, seat right now. Ironically, you're sleeping on a love, love seat. So, you say you want things to be the way they were. Where did you used to be? How did you meet? Can I tell? It's just like we at home. Cut Stop it. Off. Stop it. All, all right, right, all right. Tell us what happened. Okay. Well, in the beginning, it was beautiful. She would do romantic things like write me love, love letters and open the door for me, give me flowers, just... It was a romance. It was beautiful. And don't, don't get me wrong, she still does sweet things for me, but it's not the same. So I feel like she's basically just doing sweet things to me to cover up the fact that she's out there cheating on me. So, you know, Color, in the routine, we've had friends that, mm, my husband brought me roses for no reason. Why he do that? Yeah. And so, it's almost like you think it's... These are guilt gifts yes. instead of gifts of the heart. I do. All it's... right, Miss... Miss King, she says that when it started out, it was beautiful. You were romancing her. Why did you fall in love with her? She had no kids. I have two kids. She stepped right in like she was their mom. Come home, house smelling good, you know, bath water, because I done worked so many hours, dinner, the whole nine. Like, I'm making sandwiches now. Like, I need so my So, you wife go back. from dinner, real nice dinner, to sandwiches. To Lunchables. To Lunchables. Whatever I eat. <laughs> Whatever I eat at work is what I eat. And she's gonna remain there until I find out if she's cheating on me or not. So why do you think she's cheating? We went to the supermarket and I seen... I guess... Well, I didn't know the woman at the time, but the, I guess this was her ex. And, um... Okay. They said they need... She, the ex told her that she needed to speak to her and they kind of left me there, standing there, like, in the beginning, in the middle of the, um the grocery store. It wasn't no, hi, her name is X, Y, and Z, you know, this is my girlfriend, or this is my fiance. There wasn't none of that. They disappeared in the aisle for about 20 minutes. And then when Tamika finally came out, she said... She act like she had an attitude because I was telling her, you know, I feel some type of way. What's your problem? You act like I wasn't there, like I was invisible. And this act... Yes, Your Honor. ...is the one you have focused on and think this is the one. Yes. Your Honor. And you submitted a photo of the ex to the court. Is that correct? Yes. Look at that. And this is Miss Tamika King's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. That's... And this is the one you think she's still involved with. Yes. Yes. She, she's confident. Look at those shoes she's matching that ass. She's... I no, I don't I don't think I can pull that one off, Mr. Cole. That's that's that's, that's... confident. Yeah. When you got it, you know. Flaunt it. All right. Wait, hold on. I want to hear about the supermarket. Did you just leave your girlfriend, your wife, in the middle of the supermarket? Please tell the truth. Your Honor, I did. But there's a but. It all sound bad on my side. Okay. Um, we were in a grocery store. We just 
rekindled, got back, everything was going good, the loving, the, the taking care of each other, and... You two. Yeah. All right. So I'm, like, not really looking at an ex no more. This done. I'm more looking at, um, I owe you some money for the past car that we got together. I haven't seen you. Let's get this done. I'm more worried about getting things out the way so I can make a way. And see, I can understand that, but here's the problem. Someone runs into an ex, and the person they're with is standing there, are you gonna introduce me? And then when you don't do that, the person feels, okay, now you're trying to hide something. Are you trying to keep that door open? That's where my insecurities come in. But I was in cloud nine. I was in cloud nine. I wasn't thinking about ex. I was... If you're in cloud nine like you say you are, you can't help but introduce her. You owe everybody to know. That's gonna be the first thing out of your mouth. All right, do you have anything else that supports your belief that she's cheating? I do. She told me... Me and Tamika was supposed to be going out one day. And um, she told me she left her cell phone at her family member's house. So I said, okay, well, go get it. I'll get ready. And then, you know, you come back to the house and come get me. An hour one passed, so I called her cell phone. And I'm like, hey, thinking to myself, what's going on? So I'm like, don't jump to nothing. You know, maybe her cell phone's still dead. She didn't get a chance to charge it. Sure. So now I called the family member house. I'm not getting any answer. So I'm like, you know, okay. Um, I'm just going to pop up over there. All right, the pop-up. I'm gonna pop up. So Ooh. I popped up over there, and a, and a family member, you know, tells me, Tamika haven't been here for a week and a half. And you immediately start thinking she's with this ex again. No, I still didn't jump to conclusions. Okay. I still didn't. I was upset, and I said, you know what? Me and her were supposed to go out to eat, and I'm still gonna go get me some food because I'm still upset and I'm hungry. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to continue the day. So I go to the restaurant that me and her usually go to when they know us, and I get inside there, and the guy's like, hey, you just miss your wife. And I'm like... (laughs) So I said, you know, who was she with? You know, I'm curious. Is she by herself? Right. And he starts... He said he don't know the woman, but the way he described her, the female on the screen, the way he described her, I knew it was her. Then when I asked Tamika about it, she played dumbfounded and act like she didn't know what I was talking about. All right, Miss King. Can I talk? Yes, please. I want you to talk. It wasn't me. We got to... It might sound... I know. I sound crazy all the way through. We live in a small town, Your Honor. I have a lot of people that tell me that I look like this one girl. I never bumped into her yet, but they said I look like this... They say I look like this one girl. I never seen her neither. Okay, so you say... (laughs) Color, color, color. She is telling us her doppelganger lives in the same town as her. (laughs) It happens to be at the restaurant they go to with... We got this woman time. with her ex. With her ex. You are saying you were never at this restaurant so with your ex. How did your ex cell fo- How did your ex number pop up in your phone? Please explain that. What was y'all talking about that same car? I never paid been her the money. together for four years. And so it's been over with. So why are we still talking about the same thing? Why is her number in your phone? So you still have a relationship with this ex? Not at all. Well, she keeps popping up. She's popping up at the supermarket. Small town. She's yeah. popping up at the restaurant. Small town. It's real small. She's in your phone. It's your testimony that nothing is going on between you and your ex. I want to marry her. Nothing's going on. You didn't answer the question. That was, that was good. You kind of danced around a little bit. Do that but this is a direct question. You're telling this court that there's nothing going on between you and your ex-girlfriend. Nothing. Your Honor, if I'm going crazy then, you know, I hope my wife forgive me. If she passes this test, I'm willing to work on my marriage because I love her, okay? I'm mad we have to even be here today. And I'm mad I gotta go through this with something so ratchet. All right. That's why we have her side, her side, and then her side. The ex is here. Ron is scoring her in. Yes, sir. Good How day, are ma'am. you? Have a seat, please. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Dominique Martinez. Ms. Martinez, what is the nature of your relationship with Ms. Tamika King? That's my ex. That's it. 
Are you all in a currently in a sexual relationship? No, we're not. Oh. Why have have you spoken to her in the last year or so? Yes, I have. Please, just stop it. Why are you lying? Why don't you just tell the truth? Miss Can you calm down like no, that? No, I cannot calm down. Miss Kate. Jesus, relax. If you with her, just tell me. You're a woman like me. How Would about you want you, this baby? to be done with pay me my money that honey, your wife if I had the money to get it to you, I would be more than happy for you to get the hell out of my money. Okay, that's Pay me my money. Oh, Miss Martinez, Martinez. Martinez. enough. Stop ladies, ladies. ladies. Just, okay, Miss. You came here to get answers from the judges. Let the judges do the talking. Miss so, Martinez. Yes. So, do you have ongoing contact with Miss Tamika King? No, that is the problem. After me and Tamika had broke up, Tamika came to me and asked me, to help her out with a vehicle, okay? She said she needed to get back and forth to work. Wherever they live at, transportation was rough. During that time, I was doing all right for myself. So I said, okay, no problem, but I want my money back. Well, let me ask this. Mr. Kima King has indicated that she's become aware that you and Mr. Mika King were at a restaurant together. That was on a moment where she had to give me some of my money. So you were at the restaurant yes, with her? Yes, we was there. That was her, beca because... Miss <laughs> King, you said... Don't look at her. I mean, she's telling the truth. You said it wasn't you, and she said, yes, it was you. She trying to make it hard for me. I ain't go to no restaurant. Why would she say you were at the restaurant when you weren't? How does that because even... Now how does that even factor nah. into you getting it her money? It doesn't even make any nah. sense. If, if it she... was a couple of dollars, I would have let it go. Because at the end of the day, what me and her had, that was then. Oh. That was $2,000. Yeah. I need my money. So you were at the restaurant with Mr. Yes. Mika King. We met, we met at the restaurant, and she gave me the 175. She said, you look nice today. I said, and what's new? Get my damn money and go buy your business. <laughs> That's it. So, Ms. Martinez, when she said to you, you look nice, do you think she was flirting with you? I think she was trying to take the edge off of the fact that she knows she should have been paid me my money. And she just want me to shut up about it. So, she's willing to say whatever it takes for me to shut up. That's not gonna happen. Do you get paid? So, I get my damn money. So, let me... Uh -huh. <laughs> so, let me... All right. Thank you so Thank much. you, Ms. Martinez. No problem. So, Mr. Cutler... Here's what we have. Ms. King is saying that their marriage is in shambles because she believed that Ms. King was in relationship or having an affair with her ex. But what Ms. Martinez has testified is, I want my money. <laughs> but the bottom line is, Ms. King has not been truthful because she says she wasn't at that restaurant. And she says if it comes out she's cheating, she's gone. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, we would like to hear from licensed forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is she cheating? Uh, can you tell me the wolf in? How are you, Mr. Wolf? I'm wonderful, thank you, Your Honor. How are you? I'm great. You did a forensic voice analysis of Ms. King, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. So let's take a look at the question that Ms. King was asked. Since the beginning of your relationship with Takima in January of 2015, have you had any physical sexual contact with your ex-girlfriend, Dominique? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. I am so glad. <sighs> Miss King, Tamika King, laying down there on the podium. I am so glad for you. You look so relieved. <sighs> okay. Ladies, you all clearly love each other. Miss King? Yes, Your Honor. You need to put this distrust behind you. We have not had a stronger witness in a long time than Miss Martinez. The only thing she wants <laughs> is her money. That's it. And is I that would, the impression you got? I, you, I think <laughs> at the end, I finally understood that she wanted her money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And That's... you two need to, to work on that and get this resolved with her. You really do. 
Another goal for you all is to rebuild the trust. Yo, Ron, I don't want to be with anybody else. Our sex is great. We... we wow. I mean... <laughs> Winning. Well, well, well. If you got that part together, you can get off that love seat. Can I get back in the bed? Yeah, you can get... <laughs> My back hurts. Sounds like things get, need to happen some regular that way. Meals. You can get a regular meal in there. Yeah. Come on, I'm uh, getting small. But what you all did when you fell in love are the things you have to do to stay in love. Your Honor, I would like to tell Dominique I'm sorry. Oh, I love that. I'm very sorry. But when you a scorn woman already, it's hard. Okay? So I apologize, okay? I understand. I would be accepting. You all have been married for 22 years. You have two children together. But, Ms. Johnson, you have already made plans to move on, depending on what happens here today in this courtroom. Is that correct? That's correct. I have. All right. Tell us why you've initiated this case. We've been married for... It's, it'll be 23 years in... Um, November, wow. and um, we've been together for 24 years, and he started taking his phone to bed with him, to the bathroom with him, to the shower with him. Um, yeah. The phone used to sit out there. Now the phone, you know, it's with him all the time. He's got it all hugged up to him. He's got that hugged up to him much more than me, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, so he's hugging on the phone, but he not hugging on you. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, Mr. Vernon, why are you so close to your phone, but not so close to Ms. Johnson? You got to have somebody to love, so the phone does it, you know? I mean, <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> some of the times that she's talking about, she'd come home from work, she'd get on the couch. TV was more important than me. So I, did, I had somebody talk to me, and it was my phone. Well, let me ask Ms. Johnson something, because... You said he's hugging on the phone more than he's hugging on you. Um, does that mean that there's been some kind of change in maybe your sex life or...? There has. Uh, when we first got together, we had um, sex three and four times a day. Three and, and four times a day? Three and four times a day. <laughs> Go, yeah. Mr. Johnson! <laughs> we had time uh, then. We, yeah, but... So did it go from like four times a day to two times a day, or I mean, what kind of what kind of decrease are we it talking went about? It maybe um, four to six times a year. So your sex life went from four times a day to four times a year. Right. And right. so right now you're getting sex quarterly. Quarterly, <laughs> yeah, quarterly. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and so that's a big red flag to you because okay, well if he's not getting it from me, he's getting it from somewhere else, right? Right. Right. So, Ms. Johnson, have you found anything that makes you think your husband is cheating? Okay, so the text message I found, we were on vacation, and his phone started beeping. And the first time it beeped, I just left it alone. But you know that annoying sound when it uh -huh. keeps beeping, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went over, and when I picked up his phone, it said, uh, when I get back, when we get back home, I'm going to find somebody 55 years... That is what it said. It said... Uh, I'm going to find, find somebody, somebody 55 years old, uh, another woman. So, that was like a kick in the stomach to I me. I can see the tears in your eyes just telling the story. Tell him how finding that text message saying he was going to get a younger woman made you feel. It hurt me. I, um, I... I can understand that. It wasn't for you, though. Right. That's what I get. Clearly. But, Mr. Johnson, you understand that she thinks you oh, are said. involved with somebody else, that you want to be involved with someone else, that you're looking for someone else. She knew I wasn't looking. Are you looking for anybody else? I've never looked for anybody else. I want to go back and talk to you. Yes. <laughs> Have you found anything else <laughs> that makes you think Mr. Johnson is cheating? Absolutely, I have. So, this here... I went and grabbed my call logs. It would only let me go back for three months. Oh. Wow, that looks like about 20, 30 pages worth of paper. Um, actually, 70-something pages. No. 70 yeah. pages uh, of... 78. And those are the all the calls that he made and messages he received, everything on his phone? Uh, yes. And I Just even... his phone only. Yeah. So tell me what you did with that log. I did a little detective work. <laughs> and so I started texting these numbers and asking about why they were contacting my husband. 
Mm. And so... Did uh, you get any responses? Oh, yes, I did. What, did. what kind of responses did you get? I had a woman contact me back and tell me that she met my husband on POF. Oh, wow. So here's the text. And here's Ron, his dating grab those, profile. Please. He set up a oh. dating profile. Hold on. Okay, let, let me see the text. And separated. All right, let me see. So you texted different people and this person responded to the text. And you wrote, hey, this is Vernon's wife. Do you mind telling me who this is and why you and him are talking at one and two in the morning? Right, yeah. I didn't know he was married. He messaged me. Right. And you respond, I'm sure he did. I have hundreds of pages of numbers he has been texting to people and had found four different people he told we were separated and were not. And then she writes back, try this site, P-O-F. Right. So you eventually found out that he had set up a profile on right. a dating site. Right. He has no reason to have a dating site since he's married. Exactly. And you're like, why are you doing this? Right. All right, let's see what the, what the profile says. Okay. It says, do you have children? Yes. Four, long term. Like Lo looking for? Yeah, what are you looking for? Long term. Body type. Average, personality, <laughs> music snob, religion, other, ethnicity, Caucasian. I am seeking a female. Do you want children? Prefer not to say. But here's the kicker. Marital status, separate. Separated, right. And then these pictures are of you. Yes, they are. Okay. So, Mr. Johnson, you're married. Why are you, one, on a dating site, and then, two, telling people that you're separated? You got to realize, when somebody tells me they're leaving, I take them for their word, and I go looking for something else. I always did what I had to do to get by in this world. Was what you had to do go out and get somebody else? I didn't even go out and get nobody else. Um, I set up a deal. One lady that texted me said she's going to be coming to Texas. And uh, I, she's going to be coming through my hometown. And I said, uh, why don't you just stop and have coffee? So you're making arrangements with other women yeah, while so you're still married? Yeah, I can see what she looked like. She can see what I look like. And, uh, wait, wait, and you don't have any remorse about this? No. You're just as like, oh, yeah, so I met this woman. We're going to meet him at Donald. He's smiling about it. Somebody, about somebody, it, somebody right? tells me they're going to leave. I believe oh, them. OK, I but here's them. the thing. She hasn't left. <laughs> She's right here. You can ask my son. She told everybody she was. Could you please stand? He knows everything about me. All right. Would you please state your name? Vernon Johnson, Jr. So this is your dad? Yes. And this is your mom? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You know them? Yes. Your father says that you know everything that's going on with them? Correct. It has to be frustrating for you to see your parents going through this. Of course it is. Of course. It, it has to be, you know? And I can, I can see it on your face. Tell me what you've been going through watching this dynamic. When we go to singings, you know, dad's always there. Every time I'm playing a gig or a show, whatever, dad has always been there. You know, and I've seen him talk to other women and stuff like that, but, you know, it's, ne it's just brief, you know. It's just, you know, how are you doing? You know, good, you know, uh, have a good day, you know, and stuff like that. And dad will bring me coffee when I'm singing. But to answer your question, you know, on that, you know, I, I used to get on his phone all the time. I mean, all the time, and I still do it. Uh, to like find songs, you know, look up songs. Cause okay. there was a time period, you know, I didn't even have a phone that, that worked. He never, ever hesitated to give me his phone. So why would he not hesitate if he was cheating? Did you know he had a dating pro profile? Yes, I did. Oh. Well, how do you explain your father being married to your mother, still married to your mother, having the need to have a dating profile? Well, see, Mom, she told me that she was leaving. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, if, if that's what you want to do, I said, I'm like Dad, you know, you walk out a door, it's closed. But I know for a fact that my dad has not ever cheated on my mom. But the reason she was leaving was because she thought he was cheating. And you say that he let you use his phone all the time. She said he became secretive with his phone. He kept it with him all the time, took it with him in the shower. All right, Ms. Johnson, you're shaking your head going, mm -hmm. mm, what's going through your head? Why are you saying, no, that's not so? Because there were more messages. Um, he was talking to somebody else, and I found that message 
and he told them that we were separated and that uh, he goes on the road with his son and that um, uh, talking about having one night stands with his groupies. Mr. Johnson Jr., when you sing, you travel, your dad goes with you? Yeah, we do. Yes. So you, life out on the road. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've all heard stories of musicians and their handlers <laughs> that manage everybody else out on the road. Uh, what's dad doing out on the road? You know, he kind of helps me, like, get my equipment from place to place, you know? Well, let me ask a different question. That, ah! What's he doing with these other women out on okay. the road? Okay. Uh, like I said, it's this brief. I have never, ever seen him mis disappear. You know, I'll be playing up there on stage, and I'll be staring right at him, you know, and he'll come up and get me coffee or whatever. He has never, ever disappeared for any moment. I always well, have seen where he's at. You're saying you've never seen your father with another woman after the show. Is that your testimony? Yes. He's ne I've, never, I've never seen him with, with a woman ever. You know, we, we're always together. So, Mr. Johnson Jr., is from the court papers, it says that you wrote a song about cheating. Do you want to share that with us? <laughs> this song right here, I just wanted to kind of reflect on them and kind of maybe straighten things up. He wrote this I'm laying here tonight bowing my head in shame Thinking about her tonight And knowing that I'm to blame For losing my only darling And knowing we'll never be the same Lord, forgive me For I'll never mend this pain All right, thank you. Thank you so much. You have a nice, you have a nice little style there. Your song talked about forgiveness. Forgive me for causing this pain. Mm -hmm. And so, Mr. Johnson Sr., look at your wife. Is there some forgiveness you need to ask her for, for the pain you've caused her? What I told her was when we, um, one night, uh, she was fixing to leave out in two or three days. And uh, that night, we went to bed, and I told her, I said, I don't want you to leave. Hey, Ms. Johnson, you're shaking your head. Yeah, because there's really never been an apology for anything that he did. When I said I was leaving, that was because of the text messages and everything. Um, I wasn't just leaving just to leave, you know? I mean, it was leaving because of what I saw, you know? I didn't create a, a dating profile to, you know? And he's never apologized for what he's done. Well, Mr. Cutler... I think we got enough. So here's what we have. Ms. Johnson found in Mr. Johnson Sr.'s phone a text message saying he was looking for a younger woman and that hurt her deeply. Uh, yes. Several different women, four women responded. Yes. One woman said, I didn't know he was not... I didn't know he was married. I that wouldn't have done problem. that. Yes. I met him on POF. Mm -hmm. She found Mr. Johnson Sr.'s dating profile. So this marriage of 20-plus years is on the line. To figure all this out, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Dave Lawrence, to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please report Mr. Lawrence out. Lawrence. Good morning. Mr. Lawrence, you are a certified polygraph examiner, is that correct? I am, Your Honor. Uh, you have 30 years of law enforcement experience. Yes, sir. 26 years of polygraph experience. Yes, sir. You've conducted thousands of polygraph examinations, correct? Yes, sir. Right. And you conducted a polygraph examination on Mr. Johnson Sr., correct? I did. So you asked Mr. Johnson, since getting married to your wife, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman but your wife? What was Mr. Johnson's response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined he was being truthful. She's got that look like, what's next? <laughs> All right. You asked Mr. Johnson, since getting married to your wife, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than your wife? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? 
the lie detector determined he was being truthful. All right. So you've gotten that he was being truthful, that he's not been with another woman sexually or had intercourse with another woman. What are you feeling in this moment? Well, I, f I feel good about that. It's just the trust for me still is, you know, not, not quite there. Well, no, I wouldn't you know expect him to go from zero to 100. <laughs> right. So, but right. you at least know that he's been faithful. Right. All right. right. Now, Mr. Good. Johnson, I'm going to give you the business, and let me tell you why. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you have been faithful, but this running around on plenty POF, you need to put that, you need to shut that down. Oh, yeah, it, it has been. All right. 